I like harvesting and seeing my stuff in crates and knowing that I've done it. <laughs> Hi, my name is Kundai Musarulwa. I'm 26 years old. I was born and raised on a farm, so it's kind of just something I went into because it's something I've always known about and I've watched my parents do it from since I was born. So basically this is not something new to me. I studied at a boarding school, at a farming school too, well not really, but a farming community in Marindera at a private school. And then I went to do my bachelor's, which I did in economics in the United States. When I was in university, all I used to do was just look up information on how to improve the health of the pigs, how to do uh, grow anything. Uh, that's what that's what I would spend most of my time doing. So I realized that this is something I'm really passionate about. So let me go do something that I love to do. So I got on the plane and came back home to Zimbabwe to concentrate on that. So she studied in my project, so it's a mushroom. We've been doing it with my, we're supplying an interface. She took my 2002 and uh, up to 2009. But as you do now, then everything we need to stop. So she has since resuscitated it since I got to her. So I've been my pigs, why? Me, you, mushroom, mushroom, you. I started doing pigs three years ago. I did it as a partnership with my sister because I didn't have many resources when I came back. So she had a little bit, so we sort of, we just bought a few boars and some sows. Then we just started growing it slowly by slowly. We saw my parents already had a few pigs before, but they had four pens, and then we started building and expanding. Uh, whenever we got some money, we'd expand. Like I said, right now we're at a stage where it's just about reinvestment and building the project. So we use mainly just farm resources, resources that we have here, because what you want to do is use what you have so that you don't go looking for loans and stuff so all these are old wires and stuff that we have lying around on the farm and bricks we make our own bricks everything we make here right now we have 123 pigs so it's growing slowly <laughs> we have a large white we have a jurok and we have landrace those are the main three that we have here so what we would like to do is not to breed like a large white and a large white is what you want to mix the breeds so that you get the best genes from each species. Well not species but each type of pig. And with the feed right now we concentrate, we try to do at least two kgs per pig. But if it's like a lactating sow or a pregnant sow then it's like 2.5 kgs of feed per day. And you have to make sure that you have water, constant water supply. So we built that tank over there could see it. We put a tank specifically for the pigs because they need to have fresh water. Pigs are not as dirty as people think they are because they actually don't defecate where they eat. So you know that side is going to be clean. So the pens are not that difficult to clean. The market, that's the main thing for the pigs. Make sure that uh, you get your market before you go into the pig industry because like right now the consumption per capita in Zimbabwe is just one kg. So that's not very big. So what we do is we have somebody who we almost like a contract. So we know that he wants about 20 pigs every week and that's how we survive. Okay. This is the size that we saw them at, which is about four months old, four to five months old. And also optimizes on feed because pigs need feed every day, sometimes twice a day. <laughs> there is, you need to know your pig like, you need to know every detail about your pig, whether there's males, females, and then we do like this, the tagging. You can see the ears. When we snap the ears so that you know which piglet, which mother it came from and which boy it came from. So that when they get older and you're breeding them, you don't interbreed brothers and sisters. So that's very important. And also to know just know like diseases, how many kids like how many piglets each sow has, like this one has two, four, six, seven. So next time that we um, next time we breed it again, if it has less or if it has more, then we know like how well the sow is doing. Because once it starts giving us like four piglets or it gets old, then we know it's time to get rid of that one and to cut it, cut it for meat. So with the mushrooms, my mom used to do mushrooms in when I was in primary school, and then she stopped doing it to focus on other ventures that she has. So I kind of just learned everything I know from her, but um, a 
few years ago, I went to the South African Gourmet Mushroom Academy in the Western Cape, where I did a training on also how to do the actual spawn production, which is the seed for mushroom. And I did a training with uh, SIRDC along Alps Road in Arare. So that also helped me get like more hands-on knowledge too. This was the mushroom grow room. And here we have the button mushroom. This one is an environmental controlled room. So that's why we have these cold room units to monitor the temperature. Because like the mushrooms, they only grow between 16 and 18 degrees Celsius. Button mushrooms. There's a composting stage which takes two weeks or 14 days, and it's just using wheat straw, chicken manure, horse manure in the proper combinations, and then you compost that for two weeks. And then you, we have a special room called a peak heat room, and in there it conditions and um, yeah, it conditions the compost so that it's ready for the mushroom to grow in. Then we import our spawn from South Africa and once the compost is ready after it's come out of the conditioning room then we put it in these boxes and put it in this room then we just uh, monitor the temperature at 24 or 25 degrees, between 24 25 degrees until the um, mycelium has spread which is just the, the seed has spread in the compost and once it's done that then we put a layer of what's called peat moss which is the stuff that looks like soil at the top. Three weeks later the mushrooms will start coming out so they start off as little pins just like this and then they develop into buttons and then once they're at the stage that you know your market wants because some markets want them bigger, some want them small, some want them open capped and you have to monitor every single day because there could be a change every single day like if you can see this one right here already I know that there's a problem because it's growing a bit deformed so these are the kind of things that you need to monitor every single day because any change, whether it's humidity, whether it's temperature whether it's the watering that the workers are doing Anything can change the whole, can either ruin an entire crop. So you need to be monitoring, which is why I say this is a full-time job. Okay, so in here I do the oyster mushrooms. These ones just need uh, the first three weeks in darkness. And then the other, the rest of the growing period, which is only about three months, they grow in light. And this is the type that um, is a lot easier for most people to go into, especially people who are always talking about, oh, I don't have capital, I can't get loans, or I can't get this. Because like I said, you, this uses um, waste materials or maize is readily available. This is just the stuff that people leave on the side of the road if you're driving anywhere in Zimbabwe. So we just collect it, and that's what we use. And the spawn this is readily available. I think she is doing well. The anger is well funded as I was. She can create wonders. <laughs> I think that parents should definitely support. If you hear a child says they want to go into farming, like support them. Do it doesn't always have to be about money. It could just be a, just support in general. It goes a very long way. Because like I said with my parents, sometimes it's just be information or they know somebody who has information on how to do a certain crop or how to do the pigs. And it's just that's the kind of support that I mean. If you can just network with your kids, help them to find people who are in the industry so that they can link up and that's all they really needed.